For this tutorial, we're going to cover the new project system and templates that have shipped with 5.2, how to access them inside of the Explorer, well, basically create them, access them into the Explorer, and then build the solution to generate a project that you can use. To get started, we can go and do New, and clicking in here, I already have CryEngine 5.2 launched, and then we have various templates that we can start. I'm just going to choose the first person template, and I'm going to rename this to Tutorial Project. You'll see in the location it already gives the projects, and I can click Create Project, and now I have a new tutorial project to the left here. If I were to go into my Explorer, I could open this up and see my tutorial project. Now before actually launching it, I want to do a couple things. Now these are not necessary because I can just launch in the editor or game through clicking this. But it's good so you can understand how to generate a solution and then build the solution to be able to modify it. So you'll notice that I have the code and I can open up my code that ships with it, but I have no solutions. In order to do this, I can right click and now I get all of these options where you can switch an engine, generate, build, launch a game. You can even edit C Sharp code if it were a C Sharp template and then finally launch the editor. So what we want to do through CMake is generate a solution. So I'm going to click on Generate Solution and it brings up a nice little dialog. We'll let it go through it a little bit. It'll detect everything. You have to make sure also that you have CMake installed. So I'm going to go to Solutions, open this up, and now I have a template or a solution for my template. I'm going to go ahead and open this up in Visual Studio 2015. And then what we'll do is unfold this, and there's one file that I want to show in particular for the people that have coding prowess, or anybody really, and that is the player.cpp file. The reason I want to show this is because it has several CVARs and several strings that need to be registered in order for you to modify the actual movement of the player, as in the player himself, or the actual camera position. So you'll notice that we have CVARs for mass, move speed, eye height, camera offset. These are standard. And then down at the bottom here, we now can declare the first person geometry, which in this case points to a CDF. This is how you would change a CDF if you were going to use one of these templates. The reason that we do it this way is because it's a bare bones code. We're trying to give people a bottom floor entry into how to create a game. Game SDK is very big, and you can see that you can change many, many things just within 20 lines here compared to having to modify 50 files. You can expect advanced samples that will ship in the coming deliveries, but for right now we wanted to give that entry point and then we'll build up and show you how you can take this template in particular and move on to where you can create a whole sample with complete functionality in the future releases. So everything from mannequin to the first person geometry and the camera joint name is registered here. So keep in mind if you want to do that, you need to save it out. And then what we're going to do finally, you could build it in there, but we're going to go ahead and go back to the tutorial project, right click, and just build the solution directly this way. So it's going to go through its little thing. It doesn't take very long to do this because of the lightweight coding. And now we have our first person shooter template. Now we can launch it here or we can launch it here. I'm going to go ahead and just click this and launch it in the editor here and should just bring it up in a second. So I'm going to bring up the editor. We'll go ahead and load it, the example. And this is our first person template, the example at least. And you can see with our player, we actually have it where it's generating from where the camera position is, just to make it easier for the case of using. So if I were to press play, you'd see he jumps in. So in theory, this is the most basic form of a game that you can create as far as a first-person shooter with basic entities. So you have physics, light, gameplay, default. And I want to be clear that you can't just copy entities or scripts directly from Game SDK because within the code that I showed you in the solution, you actually have to program that in. We're simplifying the procedure, but you won't get all of the entities in these templates. So you may get some errors if you start copying things from one directory to the other. So keep that in mind as you progress with these templates. The other thing to show you is just to get into animation, you can bring up in the character tool. We have a character, a sample character to be specific, and if I click on third person, 
we bring up our player, which is our modus man. We partnered with mocap online to give their player to us in some of their base animations that you can find on the marketplace. If I were to open this up and go to animations, and go to first person in particular, we don't want it to general assets. Shrink that up. And then inside of here, we can have the rifle aim idle or walk backward, and this is the gun that's being used. So it's very simple in how it's set up. And if we were to move into the bspace files, which the bspace files that we have are up here within the other animations. So we can go ahead and do rotate rifle. And the way that we actually access this is to see the blend space preview. And you'll notice that we have a blend space set up as far as spinning. So we have something that's extrapolated on both sides with pseudo events. But these are very basic blend spaces, not compared to the game SDK, which is very extravagant. So it gives you the base idea of how you can create this movement. If we were able to go to the move strafe rifle, you would then see that we have all of this movement as well. So this is a basic functionality of showing what you need in the most primitive sense to create a blend space and also to create movement in your character and move it around with code in a template that you can kind of digest and move forward to creating a whole game that you can release and publish using CryEngine.